that we get a lesser view of God than what we should have. And sometimes I think we limit God. You've heard preachers say we put God in a box, and, and that's true. Sometimes we think, well, he can do this. Well, I don't know about that. And God can do that, and he can do something like that. What did y'all say? This girl, somebody had a birthday here, and she wants to stand up and say 18 Bible verses and quote, and, and is that what she said? That girl right there? I'll stand up and say 18 Bible verses and, and shout and say, when I, when I do like this, go ahead. One, two, three. Well, I had a bunch of money I was going to give you for your birthday. I'm just kidding. Happy birthday, our sister. Amen. Isn't that a blessing? Anybody else? Anybody else? All right. Anyway, um, we limit God. We, we, we got this idea of God, and if you're not careful, you will get the idea that, well, I know the Lord can do this, that, but not that, surely. But I'm telling you, God is limitless. There, you, he's able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above what you can even think. I can think it's pretty big things. Look at this verse here. Psalm 89 and verse 6. For who in the heaven, you ever everybody say who in the H? Here's his who in the heaven. That's what he's supposed to talk. Amen, that's right. Who in the heaven do you think you are? <laughs> Amen. Who in the heaven can be compared unto the Lord? Good question. Who, look at this now, among the sons of the mighty, strong men, muscle men, weightlifters, can be likened unto the Lord. I want to preach tonight just for a minute or two on the subject, who can be compared to the Lord. Now think about that. If you was going to describe God to somebody that never, didn't know nothing about him, you'd say, hmm, now who can I compare him to? Well, there ain't nobody. The, the Bible said who can be compared to the Lord. Many times people tell you something to compare with something else, usually uh, something of equal strength, equal wisdom, or power. But who, if you was going to describe God, if you was going to describe a microphone stand, you'd say, well, it's a, it's a stick about that long, and it's, it's like a stick of wood, and it's like this, and you could bend it, you, you could describe it like a stick. If you were to describe this uh, wood on this pulpit tonight, this is supposed to be very expensive wood, cherry wood. Uh, this was given to me uh, several years ago. Ain't no way I'd pay for something like this. It costs you a fortune. And uh, if you were to describe this, you'd say, uh, this, it's smooth and it's hard and it's uh, 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 made out of, out of wood. So you describe it like compare it to something else. Now, if you were going to describe God, you ain't going to find nothing you can compare him to. Nobody, 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 nobody. I was talking about young people this morning and how dumb they get sometimes. And this girl said, uh, they said they had a 14-year-old girl at camp and she got right with God and she'd been into real heavy, you know, rock music real heavy. And you know what she told them? She said, before I got saved, I would have given my soul to Bon Jovi. And that's how crazy. She said, I would have given my soul for him. Now, that's how crazy people are. They say, uh, you're, uh, listen, buddy, I ain't giving up my soul for nobody or everybody put together, would you? Uh, but that shows how, how little God is to some people and how big people are. Now, to me and you, people are little and God is big. Amen? I mean, he's the highest to the high. He's the greatest to the great. He's the biggest of the big. He's the strongest of the strong. Who can be compared with the Lord. Now the question in the verse says, who in heaven? Who is in heaven? If you're gonna say anybody in heaven can't compare with the Lord, now who is in heaven? There are one, two, three, four groups in heaven. The first one would be what we call seraphim. Seraphim are creatures. You read about them in Isaiah chapter six, Verses one to six. They have three pairs of wings. They are attendants of the Lord of hosts and call attention to his holiness. Think about that. 
these winged creatures, stand like this with three pairs of wings. That'd be six, six wings. You've seen drawings of stuff like that. Seraphim, holy mercy. I mean, good night. All the old uh, tradition and folklore and, and old, uh, oh, you know, uh, history, fiction, stories and stuff shows creatures like that. But there really are people like that, things like that in heaven. They can't compare with the Lord. He made everything and is all powerful. Then there's a second group in heaven and it's called cherubim. What is a cherubim? In the Bible, they're in Ezekiel chapter one and verse number 10. They have two pairs of wings and four faces. One face is like a man. One face is like a lion. One face is like an ox. And one face is is like an eagle. They have hands and they guard the throne of God. Them things are like this. <clears throat> Excuse me, two sets of wings and they have a face right here and a face right here. You've heard about people being two-faced? These things are four-faced. They got a line, a, a man, a, a whatever that other thing, two things what I read, and, and an eagle or whatever, and face in four different ways. And when they go, they go like this. They don't have... Like that, they don't have to turn their head because no matter which way they're going, they're looking straight ahead. They go like that, it turn not. Right at Ezekiel, that's where they get them UFO thing. Ezekiel chapter one, where it turn not and a wheel in the middle of a wheel and lights and burning lamps, weird stuff in that. Ain't nobody that I know of ever figured all that out yet. But I tell you what, brother, uh, they, they are what we call cherubim. And here in the Bible, they guard the throne of God. And then there's another group in heaven, and they are called angels. All of us are more familiar with what the Bible calls angels. Most people are familiar with what the Bible calls angels. However, many people don't have a biblical view of what an angel is, what an angel does, and what an angel does not do. Angels in the Bible, 2 Thessalonians 1, 7, they are mighty in power. You want me to show you how strong an angel is? Look up here, kids. One angel took a, 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 a bone and killed 185,000 men in one night. That's a bunch of people. Wham! Knocking them down, brother, like bowling pins. One angel. There is one angel in the Bible called an archangel. His name is Michael. Most of the time, people say, well, Gabriel is, our, the Bible don't say Gabriel was an archangel. The Bible don't say Gabriel is going to blow the trumpet when the Lord comes. All the preachers say it about it. All the songs say it. When old Gabriel blows his horn out, the Bible don't say that. Now, I'll tell you where they get that. They get that from Gabriel herald the Lord's first coming, and so they assume that Gabriel will herald the second. Now, he might. But the Bible said with the voice of the archangel, and there's only one archangel in the Bible, and that's Michael. Don't, don't forget that. There's only one called an archangel. The, the, Michael has a job and a position higher than all the other angels. Then there's one other group in heaven, and they are called saints, the saints of God that have done gone on before us. They are mama. They are our daddies. They are the prophets of old. They are people that's been saved down through the ages. All inhabit heaven and are up there. So you have seraphim, cherubim, angels, and saints all up there in heaven. Now the Bible said, who in heaven can be compared to the Lord? And the answer is nobody. And as I like the way old Larry Brown, he preaches that sermon. If you've never heard that sermon, you ought to go on YouTube and Google it or whatever you got to do. Choke on it or, sw or swallow or blow your nose or however you get it on there. Uh, you you uh, snuggle it. And brother, I tell you what the same of that sermon is, ain't nobody like him. Have you ever heard that sermon about Brother Larry Brown? Ain't nobody like, listen, that's a good sermon. You know, because you can search far and wide. You can bring up all the heroes of this world. You can bring up action heroes that don't even exist. Spider-Man, Lizard-Man, Dog-Face, 
uh, uh, Superman, Wonder Woman, Ugly Woman, Superwoman, and brother, they ain't a drop in the bucket compared to the Lord himself. I'm telling you tonight, he's altogether lovely. He's higher than the highest. He's greater than the great. Glory to God, brother. I don't, I don't have to ever worry about meeting nobody that's got a bigger, greater, more wonderful hero than I've got. He's everything all put together. Nobody can compare with him. And then the second question is, who among the sons of the mighty? All right, let's think for a minute. Einstein, Einstein didn't even know enough to get saved. That poor old boy never made it to first base. You say, he was a genius. Wasn't smart enough to get saved. The Bible said the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. You know what Einstein said? He said, I will not accept a God that is not a mathematical formula. And he tripped right over his wisdom in the hell. And if you didn't get saved, there's the last. And Charles Darwin, I mean, you think of all the great people of this world? Are you kidding? Abraham Lincoln, Christopher Columbus, whoever you want to think of, the sons of the mighty. What about strength? Who is strong as the Lord? Who has the greatest? Now, I read, this may have been broken. Some of you fitness gurus in here tonight might help me with this. Uh, but I read that the greatest lift was Paul Anderson, who lift 6,270 pounds. Paul Anderson at one time, y'all remember, the old timers remember Paul Anderson. How many remember, or at least remember talking about the great Paul Anderson? Listen, brother, that was back when men were men and women was glad they was. Uh, but I, listen, Paul Anderson, they didn't have steroids back in them days. You wasn't fake. You wasn't all built up, you know, looked like a frog that got skinned. Uh, you know, uh, they, they had muscle, but they didn't look like these guys now. Them guys are strong. And old Paul Anderson, he had the world record for a deadlift weight. Somebody correct me if this has been broken. I don't know if his record's ever been broken or not. Somebody tell me if it has. But uh, years ago, Paul Anderson uh, uh, had a back lift uh, back in them days that he could jerk from the ground a little over 560 pounds. Bench press 627 pounds. Bench press. Now you lay down on your back and let somebody put 627 pounds on you. You know what? You just die right there. Most of us would. Lord, I, I mean, I don't. I ain't much into weightlifting, but I've been a time or two, and I lay down on that thing like that, and uh, there's a all right, all right, brother Danny. These boys said we're gonna put this on you. I said, put it on me, and I felt it right here across me. Whoa, whoa, help me, help me now. Get this thing off of me. I can push it, but not no 627 pounds. And you know what? We our mouth falls open. Wow, man, look how strong. Well, let's put him up against the Lord. You know what the Lord can bench press? I don't mean that disrespectful. He holds the, ho the world in the hollow of his hand. Drive from here to Gatlinburg and look at them rocks on the side. There's rocks 15 times bigger than this church just between Iceville and Gatlinburg. I don't know how much a rock... 15 times bigger. Somebody calculated one time the weight of the world. It was just unbelievable. So many trillion tons. And the so Lord holds that in his hand. You know what you can do? Flip that thing off like that right there. I'm talking about old Jupiter, old Saturn, old billions of stars, all in there. Yes, sir. Hallelujah. Hey, brother, who among the mighty? Yes, sir. Who among the faithful? Who among the faithful? You say, I know old so-and-so, Brother Danny. She's her middle name is Faithful. She's never missed a lick. She's never committed a sin. She's lived right all her life. Not when it comes compared to the Lord. Nobody's faithful as he is. Nobody's faithful as the Lord is. Listen, I've met some faithful people down here in this world. I've met some people, buddy, you could set your watch by. I've met some people, if they didn't come to church Sunday, sick or dead, or stopped in a traffic jam, I've met a lot of people like that, but nobody's ever been faithful to me like he's been faithful to me. There's never been a time when I said, Lord, when he wasn't there. There's never a busy line, never a drop call. He don't ever say, I ain't got time for you right now. Lord of God, I can get on my knees right there tonight. Talk to him, amen. Hallelujah, glory to God, people. He's faithful. Nobody can compare to him in faithfulness. Glory to God. 
of God. Hallelujah. He controls the water. He controls the wind. He tells it to snow and snow falls on the ground. Now they tell us, I don't remember this, year before I was born, July of 1916, a flood hit Marion. They call it the Great Flood of 1916. All of us from Marion, McDowell County, you can get it and read about it. The library, there's places in Marion. Uh, Y'all, us from Marion, you know where up Catawba River, going up where the old Walmart is in Marion, where Lowe's now is, and up Cox's Creek, Spruce Pine, Little Switzerland, all that land up in there. The flood of 1916, that's how they made Lake James. Lake James wasn't even there. And it was built after the flood. It flooded out so much, they built the dam and just kept the lake. It's 150 miles around Lake James. It's not that big, it just goes like in and out, in and out, in and out, in and out, like that. And that flood, that flood caused it. You think we had rain here a couple weeks ago? They said when that thing hit Marion, hit Spruce Pine, hit up in Linville, Newland, and the Boone area down this way, they said that there was 35 inches of rain fell in the mountains uh, up there above Marion. 22 inches in 24 hours. That's a lot of rain. 22 inches of rain in 22 hours. They say one inch of rain is like a foot of snow. If I mean, snow's high, <laughs> that had been up to the ceiling. So the, all that water got to go somewhere. And if you've ever been to Marion and you go up 221 toward Linville, there's rocks, big, big, as that, big as that whole area back there, just laying everywhere out in people's yards. And them rocks came down that mountain when that flood hit Marion. They said, uh, Mrs. Greenlee, who used to, uh, the, the Greenlees, who was my first grade teacher, her, her parents saw it. And they said they saw big trees go through people's houses. Just big old trees flying down there like you'd take a stick and stick it through a dollhouse. They saw houses going down the Catawba River. They, their people were killed. Read up on it sometime. Look at the flood of 1916 in McDowell County. They said there was more rain fell, I think, I think, in one of those Mitchell or Avery or one of them counties. I can't remember which. They said there was more rain fell in 24 hours than had ever been recorded in the United States of America. That sounds like some of them West Virginia floods. See, when you live, when you live in hills like this right here, and it rains, it all comes down here. And if you live down here, buddy, you're in trouble. And so uh, all that water, that stuff is powerful. You don't mess with water when it's coming down there. Did you know a wave of water about 30 feet high, if it just came off of that hill right there, would knock this building down here across the interstate? I mean, you're no match for it. It's, it's powerful. I mean, water Wind and fire are three elements. If they ever get out of control, you can't do nothing with them except run and get out of the way. That's the power of water, wind, and fire. But I'm telling you tonight, I'm talking about somebody that can say, lay down, and the waves go completely calm. I'm talking about somebody that can say, stop and not another drop of water. Ain't nobody else can do that. Who can be compared to the Lord? Don't be ashamed to put a bumper sticker on your car. Don't be ashamed to tell people you live for the Lord. He's the greatest of the great people. I mean, you don't even have to worry about meeting somebody greater than he is. Who can be compared with the Lord? The best defense you've got you know the greatest enemy America has got is not Kim Jong dummy fat boy. That's not our worst enemy. America's worst enemy tonight is not Putin. America's biggest enemy tonight is God. God's not happy with America. Hey, we can handle Putin, we can handle Russia, we can handle North Korea as long as God's on our side. If he ever gets against you, you've had it. There ain't no defense against God's wrath. And I'm telling you, I'm telling you this evening, you better hear me and hear me well. Listen, 
when America starts saying, God, we don't care what you think. We don't care what you were. Just like that thing I gave y'all Wednesday night. That beats anything I've ever seen in my life. The First Baptist Church of Dallas, Texas, Pastor Jeffries out there, you know, he's, he's a good conservative guy. I don't know a lot about him, but I, he's straight on most stuff. And uh, he's a good preacher and on most stuff. And that boy, they put up signs all, on Dallas. Did you hear about that? It's all over the internet. Uh, did y'all hear about it? You heard about it, didn't you, Brother Derry? Oh, it's been a big, big mess this week. They're going to have a big day next Sunday at the First Baptist Church of Dallas celebrating God and country. And the pastor, they had billboards put up that said, uh, America is a Christian nation. Come and hear about it at First Baptist Church next Sunday morning. I believe it's, I believe it's next Sunday, the 1st of July. And the town went crazy and went wild and the mayor called and they had the company take them billboards down. Too divisive. They said that's, and, and the mayor, they said, I'm a Christian, but that's not the Jesus that I serve. The Jesus that I serve is inclusive and doesn't cause division and don't offend people. Well, all I can tell him is he's serving the wrong Jesus. Over and over in the Bible, the Bible said the people were offended at him. Were offend- Jesus offended people everywhere he went. Amen. You say, oh no, he was just all love. He was just all love. Well, you're about half crazy is what you are. He looked at them Pharisees one day. He said, you bunch of snakes, you generation of vipers, you bunch of hypocrites. He wasn't just lovey-dovey all the time. And they made them take them billboards down. Right? And Jeremy, Brother Deacon, Brother Jeremy sent me a picture of billboards. He said, I wonder what the mayor thinks about these. And it's all over town with three men hugging each other. They got one big billboard, it's cheaters.com, some nightclub. Is that divisive? Does that offend people? Yes! Offends me. But where our rights don't matter. It don't matter. Listen, this world, America has said, we don't want you, God. We will not have that man to reign over us. We'll do what we please. Oh, yes, we like to acknowledge him with our lips and he's this and that, but here, you're crazy if you think we're gonna change anything, we're gonna make money, we're gonna make money, and we're gonna include everybody, and nothing's a sin. And the biggest enemy we've got in this country right now is God. God. I'm gonna tell you something this evening, and I'm through. It's a little short message. Who can be compared with the Lord? There ain't nothing. You listen to me? There ain't nothing that you've got going on in your life that he can't help you with. Amen? I talked to a girl the other day, and I said, she's on drugs. I said, you can quit. She said, well, it's hard. I said, I know it's hard. I didn't say it wasn't. It must be. It must be hard because people sure do go through a lot for it. And I said, I don't care how hard it is, the Lord will can and help you. You mean tell me he can make the whole world and he can't help you with this? But you got to want it. That's the secret right there. Who can be compared with him? Nobody. Get that sermon by Larry Brown. Ain't nobody like him. Get that and listen to it. Nobody compared with him. Let's stand. Let's stand tonight. Bow our heads for prayer, please. Everybody standing. Everybody bow your head, please. Close your eyes.